Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's important video, we are going to discuss about date functions. Now, date functions are very important in terms of your interviews and also in terms of your real-time implementation for different scenarios that might come up during your day-to-day -day life as a tablet developer. Now, if we go into the topic, everything that we do in real-time is associated with a date. You take an example like, you know, you know friendship day, is associated with some date marriage day is associated with some day something that you have bought is associated to a day okay some memory of yours is associated to day like that now everything that you take be it your real time or be it your project scenario dates are very important now when i say date i have seen many students struggling in understanding one important concept and i want you guys to always remember whenever you are working with the date so first thing that we should come to your mind when i say date is there are different parts in that so there is a day part in that there is a month part in that there is a year part in that and there is also a quarter part in this Okay, so if I add something addition to this, there can also be a time associated to a particular day. Now, whenever you are trying to build any logic around any of the scenario, I want you to focus on what is the date part you are working with. What is your base? Are you working with the day part of the date? Are you working with the month part of the date? Or are you working with the year part and on. So one more part to add here is week. Okay. So always, always remember this point uh, whenever you are implementing something with respect to date in your real time. Okay. This is the most struggling part a developer faces because using this as our base, we will try to build our logic. Okay. So now let us see what are the different functions that we have in Tableau. Now, we, if we want to play with the date functions that are available in Tableau, first we want to identify what are the keywords supported in this date functions so that we can use them. So we have to work with your day part, Tableau reads day, something like this. It should be in small letters. Okay, if you want to have month, it is something like this. If it is quarter, so everything in quarters should work. If at all you are asking Tableau to pick any specific part of the day or specific part of the date, okay? So now, likewise, we can also work, okay? So four important keywords that we need to remember based on the date part we are working with, okay? four parts of the day, uh, four parts of the date that we need to always remember before building the logic and four keywords that we need to remember to write our logic. These two are our basic thumb rules of dates. Okay. Now let us go into the functions and let us see what are the different functions that we have. Now, suppose if at all, I directly want to get, get my dates in a specific format that I need. Okay, so in the latest uh, Tableau releases or Tableau versions, we are seeing this function that allows us to wrap up date in the format that we need. Like I said, I want my date to be in year format. Okay, then simply I can write year of my order date simple. So year is the function here. So if I go to my Tableau and if I try to create a calculation and if I write year, I can simply write year of order date. This will wrap up your order date, which is of date type data. Now you need to always remember what is, what is, sorry, what is the data type of the date you are working with. So if it, if it is a date type data, then consider yourself as a lucky person. 
okay so year of date will wrap up my year sorry will wrap up my order date in year format click on apply so if i take this and let me convert it into dimension and i'm dropping it here on the label now see here we are getting only but observe the data type of this it is a measure here or it is of integer type it is getting me only order only year here same likewise if at all i want month i can simply write month here to get my month here so now for every year we have 12 months that are coming in integer format so like that to play with the date parts or to directly get your date parts separately we have this functions we can call them as year here so i'm just bring it out bringing it out see this is one function month week quarter four functions that that we can use to bring any part of the date okay so four important date parts that we have discussed right here all those are available here so i think even day is also available here see okay like that we can work with these functions to bring out the part of the date that you need separately okay but you are bringing it out as an integer okay so remember this so these are the first functions that we need to remember so let me comment it and just to explain brings brings out the year from date okay same thing let us copy for others so brings out the month that we have seen week so now can you guess what will be the output if i write uh week here so for for each year how many weeks will we get okay so i'm trying to write so you can comment in the comment section click on this and week now you see for every year we have 52 weeks right all of them it is showing here 53 weeks 53 weeks like that so it is bringing out the week from our date likewise if i specify the quarter here it should bring in the quarter here now every year we'll have four quarters that should be standard see okay that way we can do here so these are your date parts that you can directly work okay so let us discuss about other functions so i'm calling it as uh, some date add and all so if at all you want to add something to your existing date then we have a function called as a date add okay so we have two functions date add and date diff date add is to add a date again to which part of the date same concept every date function you are trying to implement you need to specify what is the date part you are working with okay now suppose for my year i want to add two years or one year like that then first what is the first thing date add of i'm telling year i want to add or to my year i want to add one year so i'm specifying that and i'm writing order date okay so i'll just write it as uh, addition okay so let us subtract this or comment it now you see that output of this field it is of date type right but it has a time stamp here or a clock symbol here which indicates that it is with date and with the time that's why it is coming so by default when you are using a date add function it will wrap up your results with a time stamp so that is why it is giving us but now simply when i drag and drop here see here 
2019 has become 2020 2020 has become 2021 2021 has become 2022 and 2022 has become 2023 i'm adding one date to my existing year because i'm specifying year part here you're seeing year so if i specify two two years it is getting added for 2019 which was our order date we have 2021 so only the year part of the date will get added it is not concerned about what are the other parts of the dates are there it will just add up to so okay positive numbers working here suppose i want to give negative numbers let us see what will happen here i am giving minus 2 here so technical my assumption is 2019 minus 2 2017 i should get now that also it is working 2020 is 2018 2021 is 2019 2022 is 2020 so you can specify either a positive number here and you can specify a negative number as well okay likewise if at all i want to add month part i can simply specify month but then again for that uh, let us change it to month here okay and i'll write it here and this also i want to change it to month here so if i write say month of one i want to add click on apply okay so date add is adding month of one to your existing month here okay so let me actually put it in correct order do not get confused so january is becoming february february is becoming march march is becoming april april is becoming may may is becoming june like that okay so if i say two dates or two time periods it is adding up two values so your jan will become march your feb, feb will become april like that now it becomes interesting when you take up your week and you are adding up because most of the times we want to do it at week level in real time or at a month level or at a day level so most of the times you will see your values being being you know added at a week level or at a day level because we might want to round it off to any specific number like that okay so this is your date add function where you can use this function to add date to your existing dates okay adding adding dates to your existing dates okay i hope this function is clear now now suppose you want to subtract two dates okay so then what then i can use this date diff function okay now the highlighting highlight point of this is you can specify again which part of the date you want to subtract from each other that is important okay so to explain this scenario what i'm doing is i'm trying to bring in our uh, ship date here and I'll just put it maybe exact date here so that we understand what are the different dates we have here. And I'm making it discrete. And we have a ship date as our another date here. I'm taking that and I'm also converting that into exact date. And again, discrete in nature. So we have order date and we have ship date so i'll observe this our ship date is always greater than or equal to order date because in terms of the occurrence first you will be placing an order whenever you are purchasing the after that only we will be shipping that product right now this analysis or this point of reference we need to understand because in real time whenever you are working no one will come and tell hey rahul you know ship date is my first date on an order date is my last date no no one will come so you have to understand how or you know in what is the occurrence of this dates that is when you can justify your calculation whether you are writing it right or wrong
okay in terms of this sample superstore we know that order date is the date on which an order was placed which means in real time suppose if you are going to any website like say you know flipkart mintra and all and you are placing something an order first this date will be generated which means first you will be placing an order after that it will be shipped or after that it will be couriered right so this date is always greater than or equal to your order date now why i'm telling equal to because there might be also a situation where your product can be delivered on the same day right but it cannot be delivered earlier than you know the order that you have placed so that is why i'm telling greater than or equal to order date okay i hope this point is clear i'm writing date diff function here okay so like we have specified the part of the date here also you need to specify the part of the date that you want to subtract from okay like say year part i want to subtract okay year of my two dates okay order date comma ship date so i'll write uh, this as date diff so assume you are doing an analysis at an year level you want to find out like you know which of your dates or which of your orders took a year to deliver then you will get it at this level okay if you are doing an analysis at a month level or you are doing an analysis at a day level then you can specify that part now see here you placed your order on third but it was shipped on seventh so how much is the delay here you are delivered your product was delivered after four days of placing an order like that you can find the difference here so here you are working with the day part because in this analysis day part is most feasible part to look into okay but it might not be the same like say you want to find out you know difference between your you know current date and this order date and you want to take last seven days and all then in that case also you can work with this date diff function so finding out day difference from your two dates that you have and you can work with that okay so this is your date diff function here okay so you can specify day part you can specify week part you can specify month part you can specify year part all of that you can definitely work with here so now date diff is one of the very important you know functions in real time because last n months n days or last n months uh, and last n weeks all of these scenarios you can definitely try to get or solve using this date difference function or you want to have last n days from the date selected by user you can solve this using date function or you want to solve last n days from today then you can solve this also now difference is here you will use for this case you will use uh, sorry another function that is today okay and here you will use the parameter that you have created and based on that you will write a logic here okay so these two are important so do comment in the comment section if at all you want me to create a separate video on this last end days month and weeks and this five scenarios so i can specifically create that because they are important in terms of your real time implementation and your project scenarios and learning perspective also now to get your today's date or to get your current time 
we have two important functions in Tableau that Tableau provides. So they are today and now. So I've often seen, you know, many of the candidates getting confused in between those, these two questions whenever I am asking. So they are today and now. So now when I ask you what is the difference, you should be able to tell in this situation. So today is the function that will return today's date. Whereas now is also a function that will return today's date, but it will be with the current timestamp. So this part you need to remember here. So whenever you want a timestamp also, like say your current time. So if I use now, I should get 644, whatever my current time is. Let us see that. I'm just commenting this and also this apply. So whenever the data type is changing, your calculation will get invalid. And again, you have to validate that. Okay. Now see here, when I wrote day, today, it is bringing me today here. Today is a date in this 38, 2023. But likewise, if I try to write uh, now, click on apply. It is giving me with the timestamp here. Today's date with the timestamp. Now, in cases when you require time also, then you can use a now function. In cases you don't require now function, you can use your today function. But we regularly use today function to find out the base date. Okay. So we whenever we are building a logic around date diff or to find out last end days and all, in that situations, we always need to find out what is our base. From where are we trying to build our calculation? So in, a, in those situations, this today will always be for our rescue. Okay, so it will give us today's date and from there we can calculate how many days we want to go back, how many days, how many uh, quarters we want to go back, how many months we want to go back or in which month we are, we want to find out, we can do that using this. So all your questions related to your current month, finding out your current month, current year, current week, current day, current quarter, all of these questions, you can answer it using today function because we are assuming our system is up to date and whatever the date that we are, we have using today, we will get that. Now, how will we get current month? If I take month part from today, simply it is my current month. Why? Because it will return the maximum today's month that we are in. So we, what is the month that we are in? So if I try to comment all of this, now this is very important. Again, current month, current year, current week, current date and current quarter. So I'll simply write here month of today I'm writing. Okay, so if I click on apply, it is giving me eighth so which is indirectly my current month okay likewise if at all i want to get current week okay let us see what will be week of this this is my current week so i'm currently in 35th week of the year okay and uh, day is always today's date quarter if at all i want to find out what is your current quarter so according to this, we are in Q3 of the year. Likewise, if at all you want to find out, give me a second. So now the next important functions are bringing out or taking a specific part from your dates. So for that, we have two functions, okay, date part, 
and date name so there is a little difference in this two but the work they they do are very similar okay so i want you to focus on the output of each of this function whenever we are writing this so based on that you can use it in real time okay so i'm like say if at all i want to have month part i'm specifying i need month okay from my order date so let us see the output for this and then i'll show you what would be the output for a date name here i'm commenting this click on apply so it gave the month part of your date okay so specifically if at all you want to bring in bring out your date part so you can either use a date part of your month to bring in that or you can also use month of your order date to get that okay so but if you if you see here when i try to use my order date and if i try to like say month here or maybe month of this the function that tableau uses is month here it is computing i'm making it uh, discrete sorry i want okay so it is using date part of same function it is trying to use okay now suppose likewise if i try to use uh, date name here instead of so what is the data type of this field now it is integer or it is measure but if i use a date name here see the difference here it is giving me the month name but in a string format see the data type of this it is abc now when you want to specifically display your months in this format where you can see january february march and all then you can use a date name function but if you are interested in showing only the integer format of your dates then you can use a date part function okay so likewise how we have you have so like how we have used year month and all we can same format we can use only difference is the data type of the field that will get created when you are using the date name and date part okay so i hope it is clear till now let us see what are the other functions that we have next important function in tableau that we have with related to date is your date trunk function now date trunk is very important to understand its functionality how it truncates date at a specified level you are giving is very important okay so to understand that i'm what i'm doing is i'm taking a date uh, trunk function here and uh, i'm removing ship date because we we no longer need that and i'm now specifying uh okay so we will just create just to get uh, the current year what i'm doing is i'm taking current year as one calculation here and because i want my current year dates i want to add one year to my existing year so i'm using date add function and i'm adding year of maybe one to my order date okay so click on apply okay so this becomes my current year so let us remove this and i'm going to the end here so we have dates till 2023 now let us see how date trunk will work so i'm writing here as date date trunk so i'm using date trunk function here date trunk of what is the again part 
of the date that you want to truncate. So I'm specifying uh, at a week level. So we'll come at the from the lowest level so that you understand. I'm specifying at a week level, comma, from my order date. I'll specify apply. So I'll take this and I'll write it here and maybe I'll take as exact date. So here we need to take current year because we have separately created for that. I'm converting that into discrete here. Now let us go to the current week here. So we are currently in August, right? And we are on Wednesday. So I'll go to the same date and we'll see what is happening. So here it is. So we are somewhere here 30. So our actual date is 30. So 30 we do not have here. So, but what is the date? So all of these dates, which are ranging from your uh, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31st, 2, 3, till 2nd, which means all of your dates which are starting from 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, till here it is truncating to the starting day of the week. So here it is truncating to Sunday because by default week start date is Sunday here. That is why. Okay. So now let us observe previous date. So what is the start date? 20. 20 to 27. Now you see all of days are being truncated to 20. No matter what your actual days are here. This point you need to understand. What? How is your date trunk behaving? Now let's say suppose, you know, here by default, Tableau is behaving that, you know, uh, Sunday is the week start day. But like say, you don't want to do that. You want to specify the start day. So you can always do so. I'm specifying Monday as my start day. And let us see if it accepts. Okay, so it is accepting here. And if I click on apply, you see here now dates have changed. So what is the week start day here? Monday. So what is our date? 21st. So that is why you see all of the dates are truncating to the start day of the week that you are specifying. So it is truncating to the first day of the week. See here. Okay, very important and very tricky. You can almost solve very advanced level Tableau uh, scenarios using this date trunk option of specifying which part of the date trunk you want to do that. That is your start day of the week. So it helps Tableau in identifying or telling, you know, what is your start day. So for some, it can be Monday as your start day of the week. For some clients, you know, Tuesday can be your start day of the client a week like that. So it depends, you know, it depends organization to organization. It depends client to client. It depends from business to business. So we have this flexibility to choose the day of the week that it is starting okay so this is your date trunk so from again you can you can pick the date and again you can do subtract whatever you want all of that operations you can do on top of this okay so if i specify at a month level so maybe i don't need this again but if at all you want you can specify i'm removing this just to avoid confusion now see here no matter what your days are in the month, your date will be rounded off or truncated to the first day of the month, of that month. So in August, we have placed so many orders on each of the day here. First August, we have placed third, we have placed fourth, we have placed fifth. But it is truncating to the first day of the month. For every month, it behaves. Okay. See here, your March or your April, no matter what dates are there. So it is only first. So now you see, you will see only one, 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 one in this one, 12, one level, one, 10, like that. So this is your at a month level. But if I'm giving at a year level, let us see what is happening. Your entire data is being truncated at a year level. 
not month level it is truncated at a year level now how does it behaves i have placed some orders in january but it is truncating to the first day and first month of that particular year so now if i go to second month first day still it is on the first day and first month likewise if i go to any part of the month year and day it will truncate to the first day and first month of the year that is your year part because you are truncating at an year level so no matter in which day or which month you have placed order it will always show first day and first month of the year that is your date trunk so in this whenever you are working with date trunk functions always remember what is the date function date part you are working with based on that it will truncate that part of the year okay so i hope this is clear and uh, let us see what are the other dates that are left and uh, we can wrap up so we have uh, some boolean functions or date functions that are helpful to understand if your date is of a date type or not so those are is date is quarter you know i week and all so they help you in identifying whether the given date is of a date format or not so is date is there it will check whether your date is of date format or not or it is able to recognize or not so if it recognizes it will return true otherwise it will return false okay so that way we can work here and then the last part is a date parse here so let us see what is the date parse so date parse is a function that converts your string type date to a date type or to a format that you are specifying okay so here if you see here first we need to specify the date format and then we can specify the date that we have so automatically it will convert that into the format that we need so this is your date parse function okay so i think that's it from my side in this video i hope this video has helped you a lot in understanding the date functions if it does don't forget to give your comment and valuable like in the description and see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day